Well, there are a lot of corner injuries or also uh, uh, an injury not to be missed. Uh, there, it's rare to have an isolated post lot corner injury. Uh, they're usually combined with cruciate ligament injuries like with the PCL uh, or ACL, and you definitely don't want to miss this injury because it's a common cause of ACL reconstruction failure. The mechanism is a blow to the anteromedial knee. It's a varus blow to the flex knee and occurs in uh, knee dislocation where you have uh, uh, lig uh, ligamentous injury to, to many ligaments. Uh, there are static and dynamic structures uh, for the posterior corner. The static structures include the LCL, the popliteus, the popliteofibrillar ligament, and the lateral capsule. The dynamic structures include the biceps femoris, the popliteus, the IT uh, band, and the lateral head of the gastroc. The function of the posterior corner is to work synergistically with the PCL to control external rotation, varus, and posterior translation. The popliteus and popliteal fibrillar ligament function maximally in knee flexion to resist external rotation. And the LCL is the primary restraint to various stresses uh, at 5 degrees and 25 degrees. The arcuate complex includes uh, the static stabilizers, uh, which are the uh, LCL, the arcuate ligament, and the popliteus tendon. We already talked about the uh, different layers of the lateral side of the knee. Uh, there's a grading system for these injuries. Uh, grade 3 is greater than 10 millimeters lateral opening uh, with no endpoint. Symptomatically, these patients will have uh, difficulty with reciprocating stairs, uh, pivoting and cutting. On exam, they'll have a various thrust or hypertension thrust. With various stressing, uh, there will be various laxity at 0 degrees, which indicates both an LCL as well as a cruciate ligament injury. And we talked about the dial test already. Again, this dial test is commonly um, tested on the boards uh, as well. There's the post allowed drawer test, uh, which is performed with the hip flexed at 45 degrees, the knee is flexed to 80 degrees, and the foot is external rotated uh, to 15 degrees. Uh, a combined posterior drawer and external rotation force is then applied to the knee to assess for an increase in post lateral translation. There's also the reverse pivot shift, where the knee is positioned at 90 degrees and external rotation of valgus force supply to the tibia, and as the knee is extended, the tibia reduces with a palpable clunk. Uh, the perineal nerve should be assessed. Uh, if there was injury to that lateral side, you can sometimes get a perineal nerve, perineal nerve injury. We get altered sensation to the dorsal of the foot and weak uh, ankle dorsal flexion. On radiographs, you may see an avulsion fracture of the fibula. On MRI and acute injury, you may see bone bruising of the medial femoral condyle as well as the medial plateau, so just uh, kind of the opposite of uh, what you'd see on uh, the lateral side with an ACL injury. Non-operative treatment includes immobilization uh, with the knee in full extension with uh, protective weight bearing for two weeks. It needs to be indicated in a grade one or two uh, injury. Operative treatment uh, would be indicated uh, only in isolated postural coronary injuries with bony or soft tissue avulsion. Uh, for the technique uh, may require augmentation of the postural uh, uh, corner with, uh, with a free graft. Um, postural corner reconstruction is uh, indicated for most grade 3 isolated injuries. And there's a nice study um, out of the Mayo Clinic uh, where they noted that reconstruction had uh, uh, better outcomes and was more reliable uh, than a repair. Um, we mentioned the Larson-based reconstruction, uh, reconstruction earlier with the LCL. Uh, it's where the hamstring graft is paced, uh, passed through a bone tunnel in the fibula head, and the limbs are crossed to create a figure of eight um, uh, uh, reconstruction uh, where it's attached, attached to the lateral side of the femur. There's a transtibial double bundle reconstruction. Um, we mentioned this earlier as well. It's the Achilles tendon that's split. Uh, one branch is fixed to the fibular head um, with a, uh, through a bone uh, tunnel. Um, and the second limb is brought through, a posterior, uh, uh, through the posterior tibia to reconstruct the palpatio fibula ligament, and this gives a nice anatomic reconstruction. Postoperatively, um, they are uh, placed in a cast. Uh, operative treatment has improved the outcomes compared to non-operative treatment, and uh, as mentioned in that study, uh, reconstruction has a, a better outcome than repair. Um, push lateral corner repair uh, versus reconstruction uh, in conjunction with the cruciate ligament reconstruction and the ATO. This is indicated in acute and chronic combined ligament injuries. 
post allowed corner reconstruction should be performed at the same time or prior to uh, the cruciate ligament reconstruction to prevent early cruciate failure. And uh, this can be combined with a high tibial osteotomy. This is indicated uh, in patients with varus and mechanical alignment. Rehabilitation includes protective weight bearing for four weeks. Then you begin passive range of motion. And you want to avoid hamstring exercises as that will stress the postural corner. Complications include iris fibrosis. Um, also, if you miss a postural corner injury, uh, this will uh, result in poor uh, results. Um, perineal nerve injuries can also occur with any kind of lateral sided knee injury. If you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like. We'd love to hear your thoughts and what you'd like to see next in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and follow us on social media.